Welcome to the session on Vriksha Ayurveda, Botany in Ancient India. In today's session, let us discuss about agriculture in ancient India. All of us know that our country is basically agriculture dependent. All of us are agriculture dependent for our food, clothing, shelter because food products we get through agriculture, uh, cereals, crops, all these things are being grown through agriculture. So the knowledge of agriculture was being uh, formed for a very long period in our country. So in this aspect, we can uh, see the ancient text, one of the very ancient texts on Krishi or agriculture is uh, Krishi Parasha. Krishi Parasha is a text written by Parashara Muni. It is one of the oldest text literary evidence what we are getting in our country as far as Krishi is concerned, agriculture is concerned. Agriculture is known to humans from time immemorial. One of us know it. Agriculture is known to humans from time immemorial. Agriculture is backbone of our country. So we know it because uh, without agriculture, a country cannot be self-sustained, self-sufficient, because we should produce sufficient food products, food items for our sufficiency, self-sufficiency. So agriculture is back backbone of the country and not only that, our economy also. Agriculture is back one of the Indian economy. It is not only important from economical point of view, but also it provides food to humans which are essential for our survival. Agriculture is not only important from the economical point of view, but also it provides food to human beings which are essential for our survival. And even though traces of agriculture are available since very times, since very times we can get the traces of agriculture, ancient Indian agriculture is first explained in a text form in Krishi Parashara. Krishi Parashara text, it is well disciplinedly explained. It is first explained in a text form in Krishi Parashara. So in this uh, text, Krishi Parashara, Parashara Muni, he tries to give various aspects of Krishi. Various aspects of Krishi are being explained by Parashara Muni in this text. So he had given more stress to organic form of agriculture, which is eco-friendly and needed, need of the hour. So Parashara Muni is one more uh, special quality is he had given more stress on organic form of agriculture. Even we had uh, seen uh, such instances in Rakshayar Veda of Surapala also while discussing. Not only Surapala, even the Rakshayar Veda is explained in Arni Purana, Vishnu Thalmotra Purana, and the Varamira too, given now uh, more stress on organic form of growing the plants, which is eco friendly and uh, near of the hour too. Rukshayaveda Surapala is, is also given uh, more explanation on organic manure. We had already discussed in our previous sessions. By traditional conventional way of agriculture, the whole biosystem is benefited. If we follow the traditional conventional way of agriculture, the whole biosystem will be benefited. So it is uh, more benefited with this. Parashramani also highlights the importance of cow, which is a source of cow dung or manure required for nourishment of plants. So even this uh, Parashramani is highlighting on the importance of cow. We know it very well that Indians have given more importance to cow. All gods said to reside in Cow. That is why we call cow as a gomata. Cow as gomata. So cow, it is a source of cow dung or menu. It is also required for the nourishment of the plants. So we have already seen how the cow manure, cow dung or the manure, 
uh, from cow is being used for nourishment of the plants in uh, Brookshire Veda. While dealing with the Brookshire Veda, we had already discussed. And when we have considered the Grishi Parashara text, it is a text on ancient Indian agriculture. It is supposed to be composed, written in 4th century AD. And it has uh, the structure of the text is it has 243 shlokas. Various aspects of Indian agriculture are explained here. Various aspects of Indian agriculture are explained in Krishna Parashara. So it is a text on ancient Indian agriculture. The contents of Krishna Parashara include importance of agriculture. When we see the content present in Krishna Parashara, it includes the importance of agriculture, rainfall, management of agriculture, the cattle and its management, flow and other implements, seed collection and preservation, farm operations, harvesting and storage. So these are the different contents what we can see in Krishna Parashara text. It is also beautifully explained that only through farming an individual one does not become a solicitor. Only through farming an individual one does not become solicitor. It is beautifully explained in this text. So that also can be observed in uh, text Krishi Parashar. So it is mentioned Yekaya Chapuna Krishya Prathako Nai Vajayate Krishyan Vito Hirokesin Buya de Kascha Bhupati Yekaya Chapuna Krishya Prathako Nai Vajayate Krishyan Vito Hirokesin Buya de Kascha Bhupati so like that uh, here, uh, how one will become bhupati is being explained. A person taking to farming alone would, would, would become a bhupati. As we look at Bhuya Ekastya Bhupati Kera Krishyan Vitu. So this is how it is nicely, beautifully mentioned by Parashra Muni, who is bhupati, bhupati. As all Sanskrit texts uh, begin with the salutation to God, as all the, uh, we know every Sanskrit text is uh, beginning with the salutation to God. Even Krishna Parashara also begins with the salutation to Lord Prajapati. So he says in the beginning, Prajapati Namaskritya Krishikarma Vivechanam Krishakanam Hitarthaya Brute Rishi Parasharaha Prajapadim Namaskritya, having saluted Prajapati, the creator, Krishikarma Vivechanam Krishakanam Hitarthaya Brute Rishi Parasharaha. The sage Parashara told the procedure of farming for the benefit of farmers. So we have told the uh, procedure of farming for the benefit of Farmers. So this is how it is being mentioned with the salutation to Lord Prajapati. Even the learned men too depend on food for uh, living and scarcity of food will lead to starvation. None of us know it. Any person require food for his survival. Even the learned men too depend on food for living and scarcity of food will lead, lead to starvation. And the same is mentioned by Parashramani as Jatur Vedanta Go Vipraha Shastravadi Vijakshanaha Alakshmyagrahyate Sopi Prarthana Laghavan Vitaha Jatur Vedanta Go Vipraha A learned man, a Brahmin who had learned Jatur Vedas, all the Vedas. Proficient in all the four Vedas and expert in Shastra, Shastravadi, Jakshanaha. When the grip of poverty is reduced to humiliation, 
caused by begging for food with folded hands. So even now, uh, everyone requires food. So Krishika is more important as the Parashramuni mentions. Even the rich who possesses a lot of gold, silver, jewels, and garlands have to solicit formals as earnestly as a devotee would pray God. Even the rich person, Suvarnaraupyamanikya vasanaira vipuritaha puritaha tathapi prarthayantyeva krishakan bhakta drishnaya Suvarna Raupya Manikya Vasadai Rabi Purita Tatapi Tatapi Prathayan Yeva Krishakan Bhatta Trishnaya. So they have to solicit farmers uh, as earnestly as a devotee would uh, pray to the court. This is how about even the rich persons who possess a lot of gold, silver, jewels. And garlands are considered they to meet farmers for the food. They should pray farmers for the food. And one may wear gold around his neck, in the ear, and on the hand, and yet may suffer from hunger in the absence of food. In case, even though one is having sufficient gold around his neck, in the ear, and on the hand, and still he may suffer from hunger. In the absence of food, if he is not getting the food sufficiently, he will also have to suffer from the food. Kante karne cha haste cha suvarnam vidyate yadi upavasastha visyat anna bhavi nadehi nam anna bhavi nadehi nam. So they may also suffer from hunger in the absence of food. So it is uh, mentioned like that, the importance of krishi or the food products, growing food products. Importance of anna is mentioned like this. Annam prana balam jannam annam sarvartha sadhanam Food is life, food is also strength, and food is everything. Sarvartha sadhana. Deva sura manushyascha sarve chano pajivinaha. The divines, the demons, and the humans all live on food. The de divines, the demons, and the humans all live on food. So, food is life, food is also strength, food is everything. Annam prana, annam balam. Annam Sarvartha Sadhanam Devasura Manishyastha Sarvecha Na Upajeevinaha Sarve Chano Upajeevinaha So the divines, the demons, gods, demons, humans, everyone, they want food. So food is very much essential. Food is made for us. Then farming, uh, we know for agriculture, what is very much essential. In India, for the for longer period, farmers depend on rainfall. Farming is depending on rainfall. Even today, in many places, we know farming depends wholly on rainfall. Life itself, therefore, depends on rainfall. When farming is depending on rainfall, automatically the life is depending on the rainfall. Has to begin with, one should strive hard to acquire the knowledge of rainfall. So the farmer is supposed to have the knowledge of rainfall for farming. Vrishti Mula Krishi Sarva. Sarva Krishi Vrishti Mula. Vrishti Mulam Cha Jeevanam. Jeevanam Cha Vrishti Mulam. Tasmadadau Prayatnena. Vrishtijnanam samacharit. That is why prayatnena vrishtijnanam samacharit. One should understand the vrishtijnana properly for that purpose. Even the prediction of rainfall was also mentioned in earlier days. Wind from the north and the west indicates rainfall. We have the monsoon 
ప్రేమపాలి నేమియా నైరుత్య irregular moment of wind indicates irregular rainfall if irregular moment of uh, wind is there it indicates irregular rainfall this is how we know that is the uh, predicted the rainfall saumyavarunayor vrishtih avrishtih purvayamyayo nirvate vrishtihani hisyat sankule sankulam jalam sankule sankulam jalam so this is about the prediction of rain fall and further about the prediction he says tatva dande pata kam tu vatasya nukramena cha tatva dande pata kam tu in order to know the monthly rainfall one should strive hard day and night and keep track of the wind by fixing a rod with a flag attached to it how to predict this is in order to know the monthly rainfall one should strive hard day and night and keep track of the wind he should keep track of the wind how by fixing a rod with a flag attached to it this is now in ancient days uh, at the time of prashara they used to predict the rainfall so it is uh, said in shloka as tatva dande pata kam tu vadasya anukramena cha vidneya masiki vrishtih vidneya masiki vrishtih kratva yatna maharnisham అభ్యర్ the year brings with it blessings in the form of crop of all kinds so it is said to be good if it is um, raining or if there is cloud in february month magasya sita saptamyam magasya sita saptamyam vrishtiva megadarshanam megadarshanam is very much auspicious very much good tada samvatsaro dhanya in such case that samasra is dhanya sarvasasya phalapradha sarvasasya sasya phalapradha bhavanti so blessings in the form of crops of all kinds sarvasasya phalapradha bhavanti when the rainy season is satisfactory and the earth yields sufficient crop if stormy winds or thunder showers are noticed on the seventh day of the dark half of magha or phalguna that is march or on the third day of the bright half of chaitra or on the first day of vaishakha eta su chandava tova chandavata stormy winds tadi prishti ratha piva tadasya shobhana pravri bhaveshasya vati mai mahishasya vadi bhavet so the rainy season is satisfactory and the earth yields sufficient crop if stormy winds or thunder showers are noticed on the seventh day of the dark half of magha or phalguna month or on third day of the bright half of chaitra chaitra vaishakha vasanta ruthu chaitra or on the first day of the vaishakha generally vaishakha in masa and me and chaitra happen as all of know it will come after jugadhi 
So prediction of rainfall in Vaishakha is mentioned as follows. Prediction of rainfall in Vaishakha. Pravaha yuta nadhyam tu dandam nyasya jale nishi Vaishakha shukla pratipatti thau vrishtim nirupaye Rain should be observed by putting at night a rod in the water of a flowing river. Rain should be observed by putting at a night a rod in the water of a flowing river on the first day of the bright half of the month. On the first day of the bright half of the month. After chanting Om Siddhi, Om Siddhi Riddhi, Om Siddhi Iti. In, after chanting Om Siddhi, incantation 200 times, it should be chanted 200 times, Om Siddhi. And making a mark on the rod, one should put it in water up to that mark. Make a mark on the rod and one should put it in water up to that mark. Om Siddhi Iti Mandrena Mandra Yatva Shatadvayam Shatadvayam 200 times. Ankaitva to the dandam, make a mark, Ankaitva. Ankaitva to the dandam, Ankatunye, Jalik, she paid, Ankatunye, Jalik, she paid. One should put it in water up to that mark, Ankatunye, Jalik, she paid. On rising in morning, after rising in morning, one should immediately observe the marking and see if the water level is the same or raised or uh, if the water level is raised or if it is reduced so as to know the amount of rainfall for the same year. So this is how they used to predict in those days. Prataruttaya sahasa tadankam tu nirupaye samam chaivadhikam nyunam bhavishya jalakamshaya bhavishya jalakamshaya So Okay. Om Siddhirti Mantra Na Mantra Itva Shatadvayam Mantra Itva Shatadvayam Mantra Itva Shatadvayam Then Punar Tataruthaya Sahasa Tataruthaya Sahasa Tadankam Tu Nirupaye Samam Chaivadikam Nyonam Bhavishya Jalakamshaya if the level is the same, water and rainfall will be the same as in the previous year. So it was mentioned that if the level is the same, water and rainfall will be the same as in the previous year. If the level is reduced, rainfall and water will be less as compared to the previous year. If the level is reduced, rainfall and water will be less as compared to the previous year. If the level is above the mark, rainfall and water will be double in quantity. If the level is above the mark, rainfall and water will be double in quantity. These are the criteria for forecasting rainfall as stated by Parashara. Ankarikye chadviguna prashtirvanya chajayate. If the level is a holy mark, rainfall and water will be double in quantity. Ankarikye chadviguna prashtirvanya chajayate. Iti parashare noktam bhavishya prashtilakshanam. Iti parashare na prashtilakshanam bhavishya. So, uktam bhavishya. So Parashara had mentioned the he forecasted the rainfall like this. The criteria for forecasting rainfall is mentioned by Parashara like this. Then he also says how the rainfall will be in June, that is Jeshtha. If in the Jeshtha Masa, Jeshtha month, that is June month, the sky is bereft of clouds during Chaitra, Swati, and uh, Vishakha nakshatras, and if it rains in Shravana, that is August, during the same nakshatras, the year brings blessings in the form of profuse yield of crops. There will be profuse yield of crops. 
चित्रस्वाति विशाखासु ज्येष्ठे मासी निरभ्रता श्रावणे मासी यदि So certain rains can be predicted if an expert on predictions of rainfall is approached. With a query regarding rains, when he is uh, taking a dip in the water or has water in his hand or when he is in the near the water. Ants emerging from the ant hill carrying their eggs. So it is also one of the symptoms for sudden rains. Ants emerging from the ant hill carrying their eggs. And also a sudden croaking of frogs. Sudden croaking of frogs are also indications of uh, sudden rains. So today also many people say when the frog, when the croaking of frogs were being heard, eh, there may be rain, there might be rain. So these are some of the predictions which were observed in the period of Prashra also. Children playing on the road and building bridges of mud and peacocks dancing also indicate sudden rainfall without fail. And sudden rainfall is also observed while children playing on the road and the building bridges of mud and peacocks dancing also indicate sudden rainfall without fail. Then what birds drying their wings in the hot sun and crickets chirping in the sky also signifies sudden rains. There are some other uh, methods which signify the sudden rains, such as water birds drying their wings in the hot sun and cricket chirping in the sky. They also signify sudden rains. So, how the sudden day taking place? Because in those days they observe carefully the nature, and uh, even the Karashramani also he mentioned on it. Then management of the agriculture. So we had already seen that agriculture should be given more importance. Even Kautilya in his Arthur Shastra also has given a lot of importance to agriculture. It is mentioned that agriculture, cattle, business, women, and royal families, if left unattended, even for a short period, they will perish in no time. Agriculture, cattle, business, women, and royal families is left unattended even for a short while perish, even for a short while will perish in no time. Importance of human values and their necessity is understood here. So here we can understand the um, importance of the human values and also its necessity. Because food, clothing, shelters are primary needs of the individual. Fauna does not exist without flora. It's a proverb. Fauna does not exist without flora. Plants produce food, getting solar energy from the sun, and it is transferred to the animal life, as all the animals are dependent on plants for their survival. All of us know it. From the sun, sun rays, through photosynthesis, plants produce food. And that food is being uh, so the plants are uh, said to be the primary producers and they are consumed by the herbivores. Herbivores are consumed by the uh, carnivores. It may be the primary carnivores, secondary carnivores, tertiary carnivores. So there will be a food web. So anyway, the, basically we need the flora for the plants. 
So fauna does not exist without flora. Plants produce food, getting solar energy from the sun. That is the process of photosynthesis. And then that energy is transferred to the animal life as all the animals are dependent on plants for their survival. Forms yield gold if properly managed, but lead to poverty if neglected. Parashara very clearly says how you manage the agriculture, how you manage the land. Farms. If farms are managed properly, they will yield gold. Otherwise, if you neglect the farm, it will lead to poverty. So one is poor means he has neglected the farm. Parashra very clearly says on it. Management of field may be entrusted to father. So in a family, in a house, how it should be managed, that's also very clearly mentioned. Management of the field may be entrusted to the father, that of the kitchen to one's mother, and that of the cattle to some one equal in status. Cattle, etc., can be managed to someone who is equal in status. But uh, the field can be, the management of the field can be interested to the father, and that of the kitchen can be interested to the mother. But farm should never be left to the care of anyone other than oneself. See how much stress he had given for carrying the farm. Farms should never be left to the care of anyone other than oneself. Agriculture, cattle, business, women, and royal families, if left unattended, even for a short while, they will perish in no time. Agriculture, cattle, business, women, and royal families, if left unattended, even for a short period, will perish in no time. An agriculturist who looks after the welfare of his cattle. An agriculturist who looks after the welfare of his cattle, visits his farms daily, has a knowledge of the seasons, has a knowledge of the seasons, is careful about seeds and is industrious, is rewarded with the harvests of all kinds and never perishes. An agriculturist who looks after the welfare of his cattle, visits his farms daily, has the knowledge of the seasons, is careful about seeds, and is industrious, he is rewarded with the harvests of all kinds and never perishes. So you see here how he mentions about a person who is industrious, who is very much carrying his farm, who is very much carrying his cattle. So these are all the attentions to be given by an agriculturist, what it was being observed in those olden days also. Then about the management of cattle, those cattle is also very much important for agriculture and also it will milk. Of course, the panjagiriya is also more important. Panjagiriya is produced from cattle. Farms should be so tilled as not to cause any harm to the oxen. Farms should be so tilled as not to cause any harm to the oxen. Crops produced at the cost of their well-being are condemned and serve no purpose. Crops produced at the cost of their well-being are condemned and serve no purpose. Even for wool yield, even for full yield of crops procured at the cost of the health of the bullocks perishes soon by the signs of their exhaustion. Bullocks nourished on sugar cane, fodder, barley, wheat, and such other food and left for grazing every morning and evening are never weakened. How to strengthen the bullock? How to strengthen the bullock? It is mentioned. They are nourished on sugar cane, fodder, 
barley, wheat, and such other food, and left for grazing every morning and evening. Such bullocks will never be weakened. So this is how the their strength is being mentioned, strength of the cattle. So Rukshaya Veda, wherein agriculture is also one of the part, because the well-being of the plants is also mentioned there. A Krishi Parashara, a text, it very nicely explains about Krishi. Krishi Parashara is very nicely explaining about the Krishi. Cantri is one of the important animal which is required for human being as a source of milk and also for agriculture purposes. So regarding the management of cattle, it is mentioned that farm should be so tilled as not to cause any harm to the oxen. Then how to manage the bullet is also mentioned so that the bullets should not be weakened. Then uh, in Kaupen, Kaushed or Kaupen, the following things brought in the vicinity of Kaupen will ruin the cattle. That means they should not be brought near the Kaupen. Which are those items? So it is mentioned that uh, bronze metal, water kept in bronze pot, hot scum of boiled rice or of any other grain, then the water that has used to wash the fish and the ginning of cotton, gospian species. So bronze metal should not be brought near the Cowpen, then water kept in bronze pot should not be brought, then hot scum of the boiled rice or any other grain should not be brought, then water that has used to wash the fish uh, and also gleaning of cotton should not be brought near the vicinity of cow pen as it is mentioned. And also, it is mentioned that if one wants one's cattle to grow well, what should be done? If one wants one's cattle to grow well, he should not even by mistake dispose of the cow dung uh, that is uh, giving it to someone else on Sunday, Tuesday, or Saturday. Sunday, Tuesday, or Saturday is not auspicious to give the cow dung to someone or to dispose of the cow dung. So if a person wants his cattle to grow well, he should not even by mistake dispose of the cow dung on Sunday, Tuesday, or Saturday. Then a cow pinch where the lamp is not lighted in the evening is without the blessings of Lakshmi. So it is always advised to lamp light in the evening in cow pen. A cow pen where lamp is not lighted in the evening is without the blessings of Lakshmi. Who is Lakshmi? Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth. Looking for, uh, looking at such a house, the cat will be. That means you should light the lamp in the cow pen in the evening. Then ideally, bullets should be yoked to plow according to the experts. During those days, it was advised to yoke eight bullocks, it is ideal. In practice, six should be fine. Those who yoke four are wicked and those who force only two to pull the plow are cattle eaters. Probably six is, is okay, but eight is good. A farmer having two plows can always have just enough to feed himself not being able to spare anything for the departed souls, gods, or kids. Farmer having two clothes can always have just enough to feed himself, not being able to spare anything for the departed souls, gods, or guests. Then, importance of cows is mentioned in the 
Krishna Parashara, that uh, Krishna Parashara text that one should faithfully worship the cow dung heap on an auspicious day and star in the month of Magha and uh, then let the same with the spade. Magye go maya kutam tu sambhujya shadhaya nvitaha One should faithfully worship the cow dung heap on an auspicious day and star in the month of February and then Live the same with a spade. Mage go maya kutam tu sampo jeshadhyan vitaha. All that should then be dried in the sun, breaking small lumps into a powdery mass. It should then be placed in the pit to pan for this purpose in every field. So all that should then be dried in the sun, then uh, breaking small lumps into a powdery mass, it should then be placed in the pit prepared for this purpose in every field. Then it is also mentioned about the parts of the cloth. Uh, um, important, uh, there are uh, eight parts of flow are mentioned. Of course, two more is also being uh, given. Uh, the eight parts of flow are parts of the flow are Isha, Yuga, Sthani, Niryola, Niryola Pashika, Adachala, Shaula, Pachani, Pachani. Isha Yuga Lasthano Niryo Lasthasya Pashika Adda Chal Lascha Shai Shau Lascha Pachani Cha Halashtakam Eight parts are mentioned like this. Isha Yuga Lasthano Niryo Lasthasya Pashika Adda Chal Lascha Shau Lascha so these are the halashtaka mentioned. That is uh, uh, Isha, the beam of the plow connected to the yoke. Yuga, the yoke to which the oxen are tied. Sthan, the wooden support of the plow shell. Niryola, the rod joined to the beam and uh, used to control. Uh, rod is, uh, or the steering rod, it can also be called as a steering rod. Then Miriola Pashika, Handy, Addachalla, Wooden Pegs, Addachalla. Wooden pegs, shawl, plosha, pachani, stick, pachani, stick. These are the eight parts. And also there are there are also present yotra and raju, that is belt and rope. These are also present as a part of the cloth. In uh, Krishna Parashara, these eight parts are mentioned. Isha Yuga Lasthanu, Niryola Stasya Pashika, Addajalascha, Shaulascha, Pachanita, Lashtaka. These are the eight parts of flow which are being mentioned. Then uh, Niryola Pashika and Addajalla should each measure two angulas. The breadth of a finger is one angula, and two angulas make one vitasti. Shavala should be of an aratni measure. The distance between the elbow and the tip of the little finger is one aratni. aratni. One aratni. Then pachanika, pachani, should be strong, made of bamboo, bambusa or dimishi, bamboo, with iron end and should measure to a and a half or nine fists. The circular uh, abadha, a disc plow 
used on her virgin soil should measure 54 angulars in diameter. Yotra, the variant used, should uh, use it around the neck of the ox, four hands, and the rope, five. Rope or virgin foil. The plochere, that is shoulder, is uh, stated to measure a hand or a hand and uh, four fingers, while Felica, resembling a leaf of an arca shrub, that is the Calotropis agentia, should measure nine angular. The plowing is also mentioned in Krishiparasha, Ranila. There is Swati, Uttarashada, Uttarabhadrapada, Uttarapalguni, Rohini, Mrigashirsha, Mula, Punarvasu, Pushya, Shravana, and Hasta are good stars for plowing. So, uh, Parashara also mentions uh, which are the good stars for plowing. That is uh, Swati, Uttarashadha, Uttarabhadrapada, Uttarapalguni, Rohini, Mrigashirsha, Mola, Punarvasu, Pushya, Shravana, and Asta. Then blowing on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday results in good growth of crops, he mentions. He mentions the good days for blowing. They are uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then commencement of blowing on uh, Tuesday, Saturday, or Sunday may cause impediments from the king. That is what he says. It is not uh, advised. These days are not advised. Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. The second, third, day, seventh, tenth, eleventh, and thirteenth day of a month are good for flowing. And also, he mentions the good days of a month for flowing. They are uh, fifth, seventh, tenth, eleventh, and thirteenth day of a month. Then, uh, if flowing is commenced on the first day of a month, the loss of crop may result starting on from the 12th uh, day can lead to death or arrest. The sixth causes several obstacles, while the no moon day totally without the appearance of the moon ruins the farmer. So this is how he is mentioning about the good days and bad days for flowing also. So 